Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I have an astral story for you today. First, I'd like to reflect a little on the lot of the antisocial personality in the world. What must it be like to be an antisocial personality in the world today? It's like being dropped down into a planet full of alien beings who don't speak your language at all. And it must seem to that person that God is absolutely merciless and pitiless to leave them in the situation of what is sometimes called stranger in a strange land, but this in a context almost beyond belief. It's no wonder that they assert um, as a theme that they don't, that they're not responsible for what, what they do, that it's not their fault, that it's someone else's fault. Because in being dropped, as it were, out of the blue into this, this strange social milieu that means nothing to them, they disremember all of the soul decisions that they made in other incarnations which led them into this situation. That's as I see it. And now I'd like to talk a little about an astral story I've been hearing to do with um, two people who were, two men who were antisocial personalities and who met in the army, oddly. I've read that there are a very small percentage of men who enlist in the army who are antisocial personalities, maybe 1%, which is a lot less than the general population. So it's not the army's fault, but occasionally men who are antisocial personalities end up there. And these two men uh, enlisted at a very young age. Actually, they were too young to enlist, but they, uh, they faked their ages and they both enlisted and found themselves in the same, like, easy called troop together. And one of the qualities of the antisocial personality is that they just don't know the rules. You know, they never were socialized and they don't know any rules about right and wrong. And they definitely don't uh, believe any rules about right and wrong. They believe they can do whatever they want to do as long as other people don't find out about it. So these two men, uh, they both delighted in, in killing and in, in even, even worse than that, in cannibalism, as it turned out, a very naughty thing in their minds, rather like a child thinks, oh, that's a bit naughty. So as it turned out, there was someone that had, uh, that, that had the goods on them. It had to do with uh, alternate lifestyle that was disapproved by the army. And, and they had both together, they had raped that man and commanding, like, officer to find out about it. So they killed him. They were working in a commissary. Yeah, that was their job in the army. And what they did, according to the astral story, this is a very far-fetched astral story, but it does, like, point out um, the way that the antisocial personality's mind works very differently from the way that most people's minds works, work. <laughs> so, so, so the story goes... And it's important if you're, if you're working with antisocial personalities not to experience horror at this moment, but rather to, to understand and to take it like within an even kind of temperament way that, that this is their life and this is how they live their lives. This is just everyday living. Okay? So this man that they had raped, they killed him. They cut up, cut up the body parts and they shipped him to another commissary. And then the person in charge of their group found out about it and blamed the one man, right? And the one man said that it was the other man that did it, the, of these two friends. And the friend said, no, it was that man that did it. And there wasn't enough evidence to convict either one of them. So they were dismissed from the army, I guess dishonorably from the army after about six months, according to the astral story, right? So... So this was a bonding experience for the two of them, although antisocial personalities 
don't really bond usually, but down through the years, these two bonded. And the way that they celebrated the memory of that bonding was, though they were in different cities, they would make a plan together. They were both telepathic. They would make a plan together to, to go hunting for a person to kill uh, at the same time, considering the time zones and everything. They would, they would make a plan far in advance that at a certain time, say at the time when school let out, um, at 3 p.m. in one location, they would both go out, seek out a child to rape and kill. So there are various like ramifications of this. One is that for those who are telepathic and who are appalled by stuff, stuff like that, such as myself, <laughs> who are empathic telepaths, um, the how can I explain it? The very uh, this is very loud stuff on the on the on the psychic plane. This, this idea of like rape and murder and all these cannibalism, they, they're very loud emotionally. They're very strong emotions, and they stand out like um, freeway noise on the telepathic plane in the neurosphere. And so, so telepaths notice this stuff, you know, and having such an atrocious event occur simultaneously in two widely diverse geographic locations has the advantage of confusing the directional quality of the telepathy that is taking place. So other telepaths who have a conscience and are not antisocial personalities, are, are, uh, the intention is to mislead them as to the location. And it works, I think, pretty well. It's, it's pretty soul-searing to hear this stuff. The second thing is that it reinforces their friendship um, because there they are both doing the same thing together. It's almost like um, it's almost like a step past the antisocial personality which is concentrated on just one person into a bonding situation where there are family members together uh, reinforcing each other's beliefs. So that's a, that's the story. I, I, I hope you're all right with it. I hope you're beginning to understand the way that the antisocial personality differs from the normal socialized human being in the way that they think. All right, take care.